Good evening, everybody. This is another episode of Wrestle Popcast with Robin Nelson. And my special guest tonight is he's the host of A Dose of Landis and a professional referee, Jeff Landis. How's it going, Jeff? Not too bad. I'm uh, very tired and exhausted. But uh, other than that, I'm doing pretty good on my birthday. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. So, what have you been up to lately? Uh, recently, I've been uh, doing my show at Dustin Landis, which is their practice show. I do shows, I interview comedians, professional wrestlers, concert events, you know, just pretty much all around variety show. Different variety of everything. So, are you talking about. And I also referee too, just as well. Okay, so now tell us about how you started A Dose of Landis. Well, I was supposed to start off doing like a comedy show. I was going to run against a, another comedy show because they didn't want me on as a guest. They wanted me to be a co-producer and a camera guy, and I thought it was a slap in the face. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try to do a comedy show to run against theirs. I'm going to find out the guy went out of business, and then I started doing a Dose Landis, which turned into a reality show, not a reality show, turned into a uh, variety show, where I started interviewing celebrities. I had Danny B. Severin on my other show called The Jeff Landis Show, and then as soon as the credits were rolling, I was like, there you go, it could be my first episode of A Dose of Landis, <laughs> but it didn't happen, so what happened is I posted a flyer for Heroes and Legends that Rick Flair was at, and then a comedy group here in Fort Wayne called Let's Comedy, they're like, well, Jeff, uh, RVD's coming into town. So I was like, can I bring a TV camera? And then I brought the TV camera, me and my friend Mike Bowen, we went in to the RVD show, and then we had an interview with RVD, so that we began kinds of interviews with celebrities. So it's a variety show with local people and celebrities, but my main goal is celebrities since it's been the first hit on the show with heavy celebrities. So um, I guess... So I guess I'm your next guest on your show uh, when I see you Saturday for that great organization and great cause, uh, Wrestling for Warriors. Yes, we will be doing there, doing interviews, uh, talking about the show, uh, telling people to come out, push to promote the show on the Dose of Landis, YouTube and Facebook Live, and I'm going to interview you because you do a wrestling podcast and it would be cool to interview you for TV so you can push to promote your stuff. That's pretty good as well. Um, tell everybody who's not familiar with uh, wrestling for uh, warriors. It's a it's a, it's a charity called for uh, his son Chase, and Chase is a very nice kid. He loves professional wrestling, and he started putting on wrestling events for his son. And they're very successful and very well organized. They take care of the staff and talent. It's a great great show, great event. I would suggest people who listen to the podcast come on check it out. Come to Fort Wayne, even though you're in Ohio. Come to Fort Wayne to see some great professional wrestling action with class. That's pretty good as well. Um, so, how old were you when you fell in love with wrestling? I was like a young kid. I say probably about five or six. I watched it with my uncle. And I watched it with my mom's boyfriend. I was like, oh, professional wrestling. I loved it. And, you know, getting into business as a wrestler. I mean, I was pretty much a jobber. I lost every match. I didn't win anything. And I found out that I wasn't the greatest wrestler, you know, taking bumps and stuff like that. And then I started refereeing. But yeah, I fell in love at a very young age. So, um, you, um, when you uh, started training to be a pro wrestler, um, how did you fall into that? Um, was it uh, Dark Angel that, yeah. that took you under his wing? I mean, for first wrestling. Yeah, and you were also a cameraman at that time too as well, right? Other stuff that professionals don't like other people doing. I'm not going to say what it is. I'm sure you, you probably know what I'm talking about. And then since I was doing it on TV and everybody and somebody at the TV station like, well, let like Dark Angel to me. Started doing camera for him and then he wanted me training and then I started meeting other wrestlers and I got the training and started doing camera for Dark Angel though. Um, so um, you only did 10 matches in your career, is that correct? Yes, and I lost every one of them. Oh, I know. I, yeah, because you took a lot of bumps of what you just said earlier as well. So what influenced you to become a professional referee? What got you into being a referee? Well, I went to Extreme Wrestling Federation. I started, like I said, I was filming for them too because I like to record wrestling. I know how to tell a story, you know, know how to tell a story with a camera. And then I was at a, at a training camp just to watch because I, I like to watch. And then a referee didn't show up for a show, and then they're like, well, Jeff, you're a referee, and 
first my first match I ever refereed. I'm sure you heard the names Austin Gary Dawson. Uh huh. And Mr. Main Event was my very first match I refereed. And I went in the back like, Are you sure you've never done this before? So come to find out that me being a referee is my niche because I'm one of those referees that likes to get into the story after telling the story like one, two, oh, and the crowd goes, oh, you know, you gotta be dramatic. You can't be a boring referee out there. So, um, who who else have you refed that were legends in the ring that you uh, had the uh, opportunity to ref? There's Hornswoggle, there's Bruce Hart Beefcake, Marty Gennetti, and some others. Uh, Rosie, if you remember Rosie. Yes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much some of them, but I've also managed Jimmy Jacobs at one time. I was supposed to manage Rosie and Hurricane Maples. But Jimmy Jacobs like, oh, we need a manager, so I got a manager spot with Jimmy Jacobs. So how long did you time. how long did you manage uh, Jimmy Jacobs? For like two shows. And oh, that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. I seen him actually this past Saturday here on the Legends. I was like, hey, you remember me? I managed you like uh, Indiana. I was like, yeah, and, I, and it's, it's you know because with him being in Impact and him doing all kinds of things in professional wrestling, you don't remember everybody just right off the bat. But yeah, I got to manage him, classic type of guy, never had any going or something like that. I like to work with him. I actually get to see him this Saturday at Heroes and Legends. I mean, sorry, that was last week. I'm sorry, wrestling for Warriors. Yeah, that's good as well. So have you took any bumps and hits for being a referee in the ring? Uh, yes, I used to be the referee that had a target on his back. <laughs> I uh, was uh, doing a show here at FEW in Fort Wayne with Mitchell Taylor, and then I got the fireball thrown in my face. So I have my face covered up. I've been beat up by Ox Baker Jr. He gave me the, the hurt punch. Uh, I've been beat up in front of my kids. So yeah, I've pretty much been a referee that had a target on him. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, man. How did that feel getting a fireball blown to your face? It was definitely definitely something that I never thought I'd imagine happen, but they had to do some things on my face. But I'm okay, though. It's just... It's shocking because, especially in my hometown of Fort Wayne, Indiana, I'm like, oh, wow. But, yeah. Who was some... That's definitely something that's... I was actually on a show that had Sonny on it. Oh, Sonny was on it? Yeah, I think Sonny was on it. They did a, they did a commercial with Sonny. Yeah, they did a commercial with Sonny, and that ended up being in a commercial for it. Um, also, have you had any chair shots? No, no chair shots. Thank God. So uh, you you got a fireball hit in your face, you got like all kinds of you know beat up and hit, but never a sh- chair shot, huh? Never a chair shot. <laughs> wow, what would you do if you got a chair shot? It'd be a first of my career for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, since you've been refing as well, um, who do you have uh, great chemistry with in, in the ring while you're refing? Who's some of your favorite ref uh, wrestlers that you ref that you have great chemistry with? Well, I refereed bomb, the bomb shelter. I'm sure you heard of the bomb shelter. I've never done a trios match in my life. Never. And I was, and like I said, I've done all kinds of matches, you know, gimmick matches and all kinds of things as, as a referee. But I've never done a trios match. And here I am nervous because I was going to screw up. But let me tell you, that is one of my favorite matches I've refereed. And there's also another match that night. It was Lois London and Bam. Uh, I got to referee them. The chemistry was great. I'm trying to remember who else. There's like, I've had several wrestling matches I've refereed that's been really good ones. It's hard to tell because, like I said, throughout, throughout doing since 2002, it's kind of hard to figure out which one is, you know. So, well, yeah, thank you. You're through with a lot of people. So, what were some of your memorable moments and regrets in your career? Uh, uh, I took a little break from refereeing for a little bit and then I started doing some other stuff and then. I got a call back, hey, you got your slacks and your tight, your slacks and your shirt, and I just came back. I just wish I could have kept going, but I also needed the time off. So how can we take some time off from reffing? I just lost the, lost the love for it. And then what finally got you back into refereeing, and what got you the love back into pro wrestling? Well, I've always loved pro wrestling. I just didn't ever think that I was going to get back into business itself. But I, what I did is I went to Dan to be servant at a camp. I was filming a dose of land just because some people, you know, what training camp you can go to. And like I said, when Jason had me up, he was like, Jeff, would you like to referee again? So I went down, and there's Eric, uh, Awesome Weird, Awesome, and uh, Arthur, another guy, they were in training. I was like, you know, we, you guys do a max now, do 
you know, practice refereeing, and, and I just fell in love with it again, and I've been traveling since. Really? So um, you refereed a, a match with awesome Gary Dawson? Yes. Well, um, tell me about that. I know Gary Dawson pretty well. Um, I've had him on a podcast, and he's a great friend of mine. Um, tell me about his match you refed. Uh, it, it was just the great with the spots that he was doing, and all the fall. I just, I just like work with a guy. Like I said, he was my very first match that I refereed with. It was him and Mister Main Event. Okay, and then like when you got back into refing again, you refed him again too. So how did that? What? How did that feel? Oh, it felt great. I was happy about it. I just like Russell. I like refereeing the guys that I've known for years because we've got that chemistry. It's like, oh wow. So I, I mean, I enjoy it anytime I get to work with him. I even had him on the show. Got to interview him at Michigan Sports Camp as well. Oh yeah, he's doing that. Um, he's a trainer at that Michigan Sports Camp with um, Dan Severin. Is that the yeah. one? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. So, did you get a chance to talk to Dan Severin as well? Oh, so Dan Dan knows of uh of your T V shows, huh? Yeah, Dan's been on like on my show like five or six times. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Um I've had him on my podcast as well. So um what were some great stories with you and Dan Severn? Uh just pretty much just talking about his career. The first time I met him I brought up the Ken Shamrock deal and I was like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that but he's he is very nice about it and like I said just 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 Danny considered me a good friend, and that meant a lot to me. Here I am, just a guy who does TV shows, and you know, then I met up with Dan, and then we became good friends. So, who was your favorite guest that you had on your uh, Dose of Landis? Oh wow, that's a tough one. I've had people from Aaron Carter, Nappy Roots, Donnie Baker, uh, Ron Jeremy. My latest one was me and Gene Oakland. And me and me and G's been talking for years, so I would have to say this year would be me and G Oakland because we've talked about coming on a show for almost a year or two. And he's one of my dream guests I had on. I had him on. So, Tiki, so, um, so how did you get him to come on your show? Um, you've known him for a while, so did you just like talk to him on social media, or how did you guys become good friends before he became, um, came on your show? Well, uh, we were talking on social media, and I said, I got a TV show I do, and, and, and like, we'd like to be on it, and then we ran into each other at Heroes of Legends, and then this year there, like, well, did you want to do a quick TV interview, and we did a quick TV interview there. And how did that go for me and Gene? Pretty good. He talked about, you know, Fort Wayne, how he loved, the, how he loved Fort Wayne, and then he also did a plug for it, because when, when I have celebrities on the show, I have to say, hi, my name is Insert Name, and you're watching that Dose of Wayne's. So it was nice of him that he did that as well. So is that what you do to um, all your guests? You have them say, "Hey, this is such and such," and you're on, um, you're list, uh, watching Dose of Landis. Yeah, it, it depends on who it is. I mean, it could be local people and celebrities, but I just I like doing that because it's like, oh, wow, this person. Actually, so he, 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 yeah, I just like to to push promote it because it's a good way of having somebody else push to promote your stuff off there. Okay, so when you're not doing the Dose of Landis or refereeing in a ring. What do you enjoy doing outside the ring? Uh, spending time with my kids. I got two boys, Brett and JJ. They love professional wrestling like crazy. I hang out with them. I spend time with my girlfriend, and I also do my. I also I act as well, and I also help other people out with their TV shows. Like I do camera, I do audio. I appear on TV shows, so pretty much that's what I do. Oh, that's pretty good as well. Um, do you also watch any like uh, wrestling videos on stuff to learn how to learn more about refing or or what? Yeah, I watch the network a lot, and I study some of these moves. And like, if I, one thing is that people don't like watching wrestling with me because I'm very picky on wrestling and I don't know how it ends, how things work. So yeah, I mean, I watch to see these referees, and I do the same with independent scene when I'm out there. If I'm say if I was watching a show like this past Saturday, I went to Indianapolis to watch a show and film a little bit of it. I was watching some how some of these referees do things different because we're all taught different and different things. So yeah, I, I, I watch other people. Um, also, um, I got a question too. I always ask this for my guests on the show. 
Um, if you could change anything about pro wrestling and how fans perceive it, what would you change and why? Oh, I've never been asked that one before. Um, we're there to entertain you. We're there to have fun. Just enjoy the show. I mean, sometimes you might ask you things that you might not, might not like, but just enjoy the show and have fun. And suspend your reality. Just have fun, cheer, boo. Because you get paid to do that. You get paid, you get paid to, to boo us and have fun. So just, just realize that wrestling was always going to be there. And enjoy it and be a fan. That's pretty good as well. And who was your favorite wrestler growing up? Um, Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels. I, those are two of my dream guests. I would also like to have on the show as well. And professional wrestling would be Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels. So, um, if you got a ch- chance to uh, ref anybody in the wrestling business, um, who would that be? Anybody in general? Like, yes. A certain anybody? It could be in pro wrestling. It could be in the indies. It could be anybody. Well, to be quite honest, I, for my friend Hurston, too, I, I also refereed AJ Styles back in Marion when I first started as well, right around that time. But my dream match, I loved it to... I would love to do an Shinsuke and AJ Styles. That would be such a great match to referee. From uh, that, Bell, from Bell, from no pain Bell to closing Bell. That would be my dream match. So you refereed AJ Styles. What was that like being in the ring with AJ Styles? It was very cool. It was like way before his TNA, before slowly getting in TNA. It was, that was a class act. I uh, I took one of his moves for the guy to you know you know. But yeah, it was he was cool to work with. I heard he's a very nice guy outside the ring as well. So, what was he like? Last action, carried by his hand and treated everybody equally. I mean, he was a good guy. You know, I can't say anything bad about him at all. <laughs> so, you weren't marking at all when you were refing AJ Styles at all. Mm, I just thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. So, what advice would you give to somebody who wanted to get into the wrestling business? Get trained first. Do not do backyard wrestling. I came from that trade, and I got looked down upon before. Get trained. Keep your mouth shut. Don't be cocky. And listen, because I was that way, and I got the tar kicked out of me. I got chopped like crazy, and I got beat up like crazy for being disrespectful. So listen to your trainers. Get trained. Keep your mouth shut. And do what you're told. They know what they're doing. You're just now starting. Wow. So I, know this, I know this from experience, so that's why I'm that's why I tell everybody they want to get in the business. So wow, you did a lot of backyard wrestling as well, huh? Yeah, and I, I regret doing that, but that's kind of how I got into the wrestling. Just through doing that stuff and then from that I got moved on to camera to getting trained and, So yeah. what what interest anyway. what interests you to get into the audio and uh shooting with a camera? Well, I was like 14 years old. I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a singer at one time. Okay. And then I was like, okay, what can I do? And I get a TV, get a, get a music studio. I ended up being a TV studio, and then I started being on TV at the age 14. So that's kind of what got me interested in doing that. I was like, oh, I could try something else, too. I so, can do audio, I can do camera, I can do everything else. So did you... Um... Okay, um, how about the youngest, brightest ref, Chris Levine? Uh, he's a, a young uh, wrestler that um, uh, refs, refs at uh, Impact Wrestling. Um, he does a lot of deathmatch wrestling. Um, they call him Kid Ref, so you've never heard of Chris Levine? I think I've heard of him, but he does deathmatch, you just said? Yeah, um, he's a he's a full time ref on Impact Wrestling though too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and he does like a lot of deathmatch refing as well for CCW, GCW, all those great promotions. Oh yeah, I've never done any uh, any that kind of refing. So, would you ever ref a a, a deathmatch? Uh, not my forte, but I mean, if I were to ask, I'd say yeah, because it's something different for me. I mean, it's always good to have a different kind of match to referee because you have the same match you referee and over and over, it's boring. So, um, so how how is the refing styles when you ref, uh, you know, ref, um, you know, different wrestlers of their wrestling styles? Do you have to like be part of that style, or do you have your own refing type of style while you're refing these wrestlers? Well, I pay attention to what they do. 
and just see how, how they act and how they react. Like, say when someone go for a pin, I see how they're doing it, and I, I look at every every aspect of them when they're in the ring because I know what's going to go on and they're telling a story. And I'm there to, you know, I'm there to follow it and, and, and go along with it. So when you're in the ring reffing, do you know where to stand and where to get out of the way while the wrestlers are uh, wrestling? Do you know what point of the ring to stand, where you need to be, etc.? Yeah, when I'm paying attention, yeah. But there's been a couple incidents where there's one I was in Evo in Logan Sport and I finally got kicked in the face by one of the wrestlers. Ooh, that had to hurt. Yeah, it was my nose. And then I seen that over at uh, one of my other wrestling friends. He got kicked in the nose and he was bleeding. So I was checking to make sure I wasn't bleeding. But like I said, when you're refereeing, you got to watch where you're going at all times. But like I said, like as, as wrestling, anything can happen. Same with refereeing. So the same rules apply, except for I'm not in there getting beat up. If that makes any sense. Yes, it does. So, uh, Jeff, where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, I've got uh, Jeff Landis Entertainer on Facebook, which is my acting page, my refing page, audio camera page, and I got Adosa Landis, like Adosa Landis on Facebook, which is on my TV show's page where you can see what's coming on next, what I have planned, who I'm working on, that type of stuff. All right, Jeff. Uh, thank you for taking your time to come on to the podcast and looking forward to meeting you this Saturday at Wrestling for Warriors. Oh, yes. I will be there for sure. You come up to me like, hey, it's Robin. And I'm like, okay. And then you are from there. Hey, or you can come up to me and go, hey, Robin, this is Jeff. <laughs> that works too. That works too. I'm sure it'll be busy that day for sure. Yes, it will. Um, like I said, thank you for uh, coming on and also a happy birthday again. I feel more. And then um, tomorrow night, I'm going to be on with uh, David C. Russell on the Everett Lee podcast at the Podcast City Network. And we're going to be interviewing a um, deathmatch wrestler by the name of Dirtbag. So that will be pretty good. Tune in to the Everett Lee show at Podcast City dot net and also everybody thank you for listening you can follow my podcast at wrestle popcast at podcast city network at podcast city dot net home of the everett lee show death match wrestle podcast and the chris carnage show check those out as well and you can listen to my live uh, podcast at wrestle popcast on spreaker.com hit the hit follow button and you can also follow me at wrestle popcast on itunes hit the subscribe button rate me it helps me out a lot and you can follow me at facebook at wrestle popcast and also on twitter at wrestle low hyphen popcast and you can listen to my episodes at wrestle popcast on youtube hit the subscribe button and you can also hear me at uh, wrestle popcast on player fm everybody have a great evening